was a privilege to have an Air Force colleague here, Dr. Heather Pickett, and we were in the service for several years together, yes, cross right. paths doing mm -hmm. different things and never really had a conversation. So right. this is wonderful to meet here at Low Carb Denver. So give us a little bit of your background getting into medicine. So you're an Air Force Academy grad. I am. I really wanted to fly. Yeah, I did. <laughs> I'm originally from Southern California. It was either going to be UCLA as a sorority girl or decide to go to the Air Force Academy at the last minute, which was kind of crazy. I loved aviation and I wanted to be a pilot. And then um, at the academy, I kind of had this, you know, revolution, revelation. I thought I'd want to fly fighters, and I couldn't back then in the 80s. And so I went to med school, and I was one of the first cadets to go to a DO school because I liked a little more of the holistic approach. So the Air Force sent me to DO school. Yeah, so you finish your training, your residency mm -hmm. training. Mm -hmm. You started, you said, in general surgery and then flight med. So Right, so I finished med school and then I did a general surgery internship and I thought, okay, I really want to do general surgery, but I realized I, in the Air Force you get an opportunity after internship to go practice, as you know, as a general medical officer or as a flight surgeon. And I thought, well, gosh, this is the best of both worlds. I can be a doctor for the pilots and I'm going to do this before finishing residency. So I went out and I was a flight surgeon and was able to work at Edwards Air Force Base and work in Germany and do some several other really neat assignments, as you know, being a fellow flight doc. Mm -hmm. um, got a fly in fighters and did a lot with occupational medicine, public health, a um, lot of preventive medicine. And one thing that really challenged me was it seemed like our Air Force members just kept having more and more problems with weight. And that was something that even the pilot crew, that even you, the pilot crew, not as like much, but yes, they, exactly. See the Hollywood, but the real world exactly. is, is not so much like that. And right. not just the pilots, but you know, as a maybe explain to the audience watching, what like what is your day like? People hear flight surgeon and they think, oh, you're like you know doing operations on planes. But but t tell us a, what a typical day or a typical week would be at, at Edwards Air Force Base. You know, where pilot training, fighter pilot training is yeah. what you would do as, as a doc. Yeah, so as a doc, basically, you call it surgeon because in the Army, in the original you know, World War II, uh, a surgeon is a physician, so that's a British term. So I wasn't doing surgery in the air, although I have done some procedures in the air, I will say. Uh, but a typical flight surgeon is actually the pilot's um, you are there to approve if the pilots are going to fly or not. And a big thing as a flight surgeon is you've got to understand what kind of uh, physiological challenges they're going through. So especially at Edwards Air Force Base, which is the Air Force Test Pilot School and the Flight Test Center, we really had to understand what challenges are there in flight with high performance flight. We had helicopters back then. We had heavies. We were testing uh, a lot of uh, really interesting materials uh, for radar. You're working with occupational health and po possible toxic solvents. Um, we had the space shuttle astronauts back then, so you really do a lot of that, but you're also seeing the pilots as patients and their families, and you're keeping them healthy. You're doing whatever you can to keep them flying in the air, which means limiting medications, which means as an osteopath, you know, I would do manipulation on them to avoid having to give them medicine so they could go back up and fly. I think the other thing that was amazing is that we also had to keep ourselves to that same standard. So we were considered air crew. We also did a lot of hyperbaric medicine, altitude chambers and dive chambers because we had SR-71 out there, we had the U-2. So those are just some of the things you get to do as a flight surgeon. And of course, after that came a lot of our um, involvement in the conflicts and flight surgeons are front of the line for that. But you really are doing, it's the ultimate family medicine because- yeah, they, have, they have to trust you they enough have to, to come to trust you, you and say, look, I have this problem. Mm -hmm. And they <laughs> and, would wait and, until yeah. it's really bad because they wouldn't tell you. But since you're under the same you know, requirements and medical standards, you uh, understand that you know you have to. And it's the art of building trust. It like you, really you, you is. Do. They, if they which, don't trust you, they won't come to you. Which prompted it's me a, to go into family it, medicine. Yeah, it, it is. Um, it's the ultimate family doc. Right. And so after that, I actually did a residency. They trust you with their lives. They they, they do, and me too. Right. Yeah. They're taking off and letting me fly in the back seat, and I, I trust them. So after that, I did go into family medicine because I realized I loved the connection of 
cradle to grave connecting with the families and really getting to know them and so then I went on into family medicine and ultimately as a professor in family medicine in the Air Force. And came back in to the, some of the Air Force residency programs, correct? I did, I did. Yeah, I, so I, residency I, programs are where we train other physicians. A lot of medical students come through residency programs. So about what years were you in, in residency training, training other doctors? So I was training students? doctors for about uh, 10 years and um, did it from 04 to 14 and did it with two, I helped start a program at the St. Louis University Family Medicine Residency in uh, Scott Air Force Base, so combined residency with the Air Force residents and taught them about operational medicine. Um, but one of the big things I had the opportunity to do was learn medical acupuncture. So to tie in a different paradigm to family medicine to see, hey, it's not just about pain management or it's just not just about medications. Let's incorporate medical acupuncture into what we're doing. I already was doing that as an osteopath. And then when I came out to Nellis Air Force Base in Las Vegas to help start the residency, continued that on. And uh, that's where I started learning a little bit more about intermittent fasting. And towards the end of my career, started exploring things a little bit, but not in so much detail until I retired. So back in the heart of your Air Force career, because mm -hmm. I was in about the same time and mm -hmm. going to the conferences. If you had a patient come in who was active duty and failed the tape test, who needed to lose 20 pounds to yeah. keep their job, this is a right. real deal. Like this right. isn't like fit better in a pair of jeans. You lose your job if, if you are obese, mm -hmm. and, and they're all trying things off the internet. But so, what was your traditional approach at about 2010? Someone came in needed needed to lose 30 pounds. What what would you suggest? You literally would refer them to a dietitian. And typically it didn't work. You know, they're exercising so they're hard. Exercising a ton. So long. <laughs> their the gut's exercise. not shrinking. Yeah. I mean, I was a race walker because my knee had been trashed from some injuries. Um, but I'd try to get them out there and do more. But I kept going, they're working out so hard. They're doing low fat. You know, they're having all this chronic pain. It's not working. And some of them would tell me they're going to those, you know, wraps and yeah, you know trying to do whatever stuff. they could they'd do show up and they'd show me the shakes right that, that the, these 800 calorie a day fasts and then they gain it all back right they, they wanted to keep their job i didn't feel like i had a lot yeah, of options i, I, I really like felt stuck and i was like okay so you go down to the spa and get your little wrap and get your <laughs> and then we had an acupuncture protocol that might have helped you know but just and, more like training the brain right one of our docs um who we a mutual doc that we knew i think in at andrews air force base who was a big acupuncture guru would do uh acupuncture and also put them on a low carb diet wow she's doing and that. Doing he was carb. doing that back in the mid 90s and the question was was the acupuncture working was low carb diet there were a bunch of people who were doing it but it was kind of really just trying it out and I just really didn't feel like I had a lot for them. And you you kind of go, well, I guess they're lazy or it's their genetics or it's their metabolism. And I was all and my you're diabetics. Lean. You're like, well, look, it works for me. I'm lean. You know, it should right, just low fat and high carb and organic. And we're doing all this even though my migraines are getting worse, but I can't tell anyone. You know, and I'm, I'm starting to have chronic pain issues uh, towards the end of my career. And I, you know, I had to kind of keep it, keep it under wraps because you didn't want to be labeled as anything, oh, and I oh, didn't. Yeah, I was right. like, "What is that about?" So, give us a little bit. Like you're here in, at Low Carb Denver now, you know, in a coronavirus scare. So you must want to be here. I <laughs> and do. You must really care about. I do. Like uh, learning. So 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 that was you know 2010 ish. You know, you're teaching 13, residents yeah. in 13, mm -hmm. and somehow something in your experience since then has made you think different about. You know this whole disaster. I mean, sixty-five yes. percent of Air Force members are overweight or obese. Yes. Sixty percent of Marines are overweight or obese, oh and I don't gosh. think those people are gluttonous and lazy. No. They're like the hardest ass working people. Yes. So, so what what made you start questioning and now rethinking and maybe want to apply? Yeah, some paradigm of this shift to your practice. You know, you're still seeing patients in mm -hmm. Utah now, have you? Yeah, so I uh, started working at the VA after I retired, and I was fortunate enough to be in pain management, which was not prescribing opioids, but I was fortunate to work in medical acupuncture and osteopathic manipulation. So what are the typical patients I'm seeing? Oh my gosh, broken, chronic pain, PTSD, major mental health issues. 
But even with the acupuncture and even with what we're doing with our pain management, it never really felt like there was an end point for them getting better. You still had the inflammation, you still had the pain recurring, but it at the Las Vegas VA, they had something called the MOVE program with the veterans, you probably know about that. And a lot of these patients were on this low carb diet. I don't wanna say diet, we like to say lifestyle, but I had patients coming in losing 100 and 200 pounds and that started wow. me really looking and you know, seeing their pain levels improve and having to do less acupuncture on them. Started looking into that. Then I went up to Utah to help start an integrated family medicine clinic and a few of my patients started asking me about uh, keto and intermittent fasting, and I was like, meh, I kind of knew about it. I knew about Jason Fung a little bit. A friend of mine, a PT friend of mine had started me uh, looking into intermittent fasting, and I thought, well, I like this. This is a good idea. But okay, let's look into it more. Didn't really think anything about the keto, because that's not sustainable. In my mind, no, you can do the intermittent fast, you can eat yeah, whatever no you one, want, no one can but it's not sustainable, and forget it. And it's, the rest of their life. Yes, it and I was a residency faculty. I can't teach this stuff. I mean, we never would teach that it's not about- the boards, it's the opposite. Right, about eggs and bacon and-, and you'd, or, fail, you'd fail the boards exactly. if, you, if that was the correct exactly. answer. <laughs> so like, oh. And so I had a few patients ask me to start teaching about keto and intermittent fasting. So I took a month to really dive in nice. and really started listening to Jason Fung, um, looked at Diet Doctor and saw on Diet Doctor, there's resources for doctors. And I looked at that, I'm like, oh, this is awesome. And so I actually did a lunch and learn at my place of employment, it's an employee clinic, and it was standing room only. Like it oh, was yeah. packed. Everyone wants to just know it, learn And I could not believe it. You know, you're a respected, you know, authority. So for but you I, to be speaking about this, I just learned about it, right? Yeah, I mean, I'm least, just you're, you're, right. You're, you're you're giving people questions, right? right? Like That's what versus you're telling them what to do, right? Like this and is I what think I'm lear learning about and it's we're learning it together, yeah, yeah, right? We're, we're learning, learning, learning it with the from patients. my patients. My patient came back and lost a hundred pounds. I'm asking that patient, well, tell me what you did, right? <laughs> yeah, you know, I want to so, learn about what you did. As a result of that, now for the last year, and it's only a year, I feel like such a baby, like an intern mm -hmm. with this the whole low carb curve community. Is, is, is like right? this for all of us. <laughs> but I, uh, which is what I want to, you know, talk about. How can we start exchanging information? But in the last year, I've had uh, quite a few patients on some form of low carb, and it is transformational. I know I'm probably preaching in the choir to, to other fellow docs, but it is so. Uh, inspiring and it's how I was when I first learned acupuncture because you saw a patient with pain and you realized I do not have to just give him pain meds yeah. right I can see a change in what's happening with them but this even gets deeper to the root cause and I see joy in your face and I can I can imagine now if you go in and it's a repeat visit and they're off of two diabetes it medicines, is. their energy's good. It's like, that, that's, you, you hug them and it that's the visit. It is, it's so and it's inspiring. That, it makes you wanna go back to work. Right, it does. Like if the visit is you just added two medicines because this wasn't in control, right. you know, you have to send them to the lab because this is going off the rails and they feel like garbage, but you check those boxes that the you know quality people, like the patient Metrics. doesn't feel good about that, you don't feel good about no. that. But, but I'm system, checking off the CPG. But you're doing all the thing. But but it's 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 a beautiful thing, and it's not every patient. Well, so and I love. Where do you see this oh, going now? And and you know you're you're now an agent of change. You know, <laughs> whether you like it or not, now you're an agent of change. Well, that's exactly in it. Your like, institution to go to educate. So so where, where does it go? I think Brian said it. Oh, I think Brian said it. You can't unlearn what you've learned, right? Now, n with what I've seen in the last year, I can't change it. Another big thing is I had my aha moment with myself. I moved up to Utah and I was having 17 migraines a month. And I read about some of the information on Diet Doctor about migraines, about what George Eady was doing with the brain. Yeah. I did it for myself and I'm down to maybe two a month and I'm oh, like, oh. What? And this is chronic pain. The it's just like so the, the neurological issue, you know, right? It doesn't eliminate them, but it, it right. helps control them in certain patients, not all. So I don't um, know where no this is, is going. Yeah. I know not everyone in my organization um, agrees with it. You feel kind of like a lone wolf sometime until you come here, which is why I want it to be here in person and meet yeah. people you like have you. have a tribe that even though you might be one or two in your institution, right. you know, now with social media and the internet and Diet Doctor now has a three hour CME. I just course. saw that. So just I'm let so people excited. go do that. 
Yes. And not that they need, it's not a religion that we need it's to believe not. or not believe. It's, it's the just, data is there. Here's, this is what, this is like acupuncture, right? You have chronic pain, you can take opiates, or we could do Correct. acupuncture. You know, it's what do you want to try? Mm -hmm. This one's going to get you off of the meds, maybe. Mm -hmm. This one is more meds. Right. More side effects. It's just the rejoicing of, I have a diabetic, 12.0. Even golden A1C down to 5.8. Yeah. I have never had that in 25 never. years. Yeah, you don't have that in medicine. Right. A risk of Triglycerides plummeting 200 even, points. Well, like, you know. It. It's so exciting. And when you get it back, I'm like, is this, this isn't real. Yeah, so you have these celebrations you with do. your patients. You get you the A1C do. back and you're like, whoa. <laughs> and you want to share it with everyone, but you're so busy, so you got to get on to the yeah, next patient. Yeah. Well, good. We'll keep it hey, going. Hey, thank you, yeah, Elva. High, thank you for what you're Force. doing. You are inspiring yeah, we're still all on the of same us. Team, both retired. Yeah, we are. So it's great. It's good. My hair is going to grow out a little bit. <laughs> yeah, it's it's out of range, so but so is mine. Now, it's cool. <laughs>